Hey, welcome to Copy Chief Radio. Today's show is a Coffee with Kev episode where you and I have a quick chat, just like we were sitting together in the coffee shop. And my goal is to help you solve one specific problem and find new inspiration for taking your copywriting and your business to the next level. To check out all the Copy Chief Radio episode types, go to copychief.com forward slash CCR. Hey, welcome. Pull up a chair. It is great to see you. Welcome to the diner. Let's have a cup and talk about something really important today. And it is the proper way to grow a freelancing career as opposed to the quick and easy way to completely trash a copywriting career, especially if you have no experience. Because I'm seeing more and more these offers for how you can quickly double, triple, quadruple your income as a freelancer or start making money with no experience as a copywriter. These are deadly. And look, I get it. Money is how we measure success, especially here in America. So the appeal of a promise that you can skyrocket your income overnight is a sexy one. We see it every day and understandably people fall for it. Now, if you're thinking, well, the people who would believe that probably don't care about having a successful career as a freelancer, you're right. And that is exactly why this style of marketing pisses me off. Uh, and so I'm just going to keep saying this phrase until I feel like everyone hears me, which will take the rest of my life. But freelancing is not biz up. Freelancing is not biz up. But that won't stop these quick buck marketers from selling it that way. Because after all, if BizOp is the only lens that you see business through, then why would you teach anything else? So it's up to you as the freelancer who does care about your career, who wants to have longevity, who wants to have success, who wants to have respect around your name and enjoy the clients you work with. It's up to you to apply your own logic filter to these kinds of offers. And to bring this home a bit, here is a horror story for you. I heard directly from a guy, a company owner in the health niche that he was looking for a copywriter and a guy came up and he said, hey, I understand you need a VSL and I could write you one for, for $20,000. And he said, oh, okay, um, how long have you been writing copy? He says, uh, six months. <laughs> then he said, well, wow, you must be really good. He said, can I see some of your work? Uh, and the guy said, well, I've never written a VSL before, but I wrote a Facebook ad for a cookbook, so I'm sure I can do it. All right, let's just let that sit for a second. If you have any understanding or respect for this craft, you know how unbelievably ridiculous that is. Not that this person couldn't potentially write a really good VSL, obviously, but tomorrow, next week, in two weeks for 20 grand, when you've never even written one before, as practice that you could show, it's outrageous. And so look, I, I could go on about how ignorant and hurtful that is to the industry, but the worst part is this, that client, the guy who told me the story, I know has been going around telling the same story to anyone who will listen, peers and other copywriters and, and everyone alike. I've now heard this story from the same person from three other people that he told it to. And he's doing that because he wants to warn other business owners not to hire this guy or anybody else to give him work or refer him or anything like that, right? And so, that dude's career is pretty much over before it, be, it, it could begin, or he's gonna, he's in a deep hole now, right? To go try to remake this first impression. So when we see like any kind of magic trick style tactic promising that you can get paid 2X, 3X, 5X or more tomorrow than you did yesterday, at the very least, we've got to ask ourselves, uh, do I know anyone who's actually used this tactic to do it? I mean, beyond the claims on the sales page. And if there are 
testimonials or people on the sales page that the person selling this thing has, is claiming have done this, have you reached out to them like directly? It's very easy to find people, especially a freelancer who's calling themselves a freelancer. They should be easy to find via their website or LinkedIn or something, right? And so why not reach out to these people directly, uh, Facebook, and say, hey, saw you featured on the sales page and I'm just, that's impressive. Considering that, that product, could, could you tell me a little bit more about how, how it worked for you? Do, do you endorse it? Is it really true that you were ma- able to double your income that quickly? Maybe they'll say, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, uh, I was living in the dark uh, before and now I do it this way and, and life's amazing. I, I highly recommend it. Great. That's something to consider. But at least check, right? Because we have to be in the habit of verifying and not and getting past the hype. You know, we don't want to fall for the, well, I'm going to sell them what they want and then give them what they need. Because that's not helpful either. Even more simply, you can just ask yourself, do I know anyone I respect as a freelancer who has doubled their income in, a, say, a single week? Not on a one-time project, but on a consistent basis. And again, doubtful. But I will tell you this, I was thinking about this. And I was like, you know, it's crazy. Double your income in a week or however people phrase it. And then I thought, you know what? I actually kind of did that once, right? In my career, I, I could come up with a instance where I could frame that as, as, as a promise, so to speak, or at least through my own reference. So let's just say that I can directly claim that I did once double my copywriting income in one week. And in fact, technically, I could say that I tripled or even 5X my copywriting income in one week, major air quotes around in one week. But here's how it happened. I'll just give you the story. So back in 2010, I was writing primarily in ClickBank. If you don't know ClickBank, it is sort of the biggest affiliate marketplace in the world uh, where people create digital products, mostly, you know, courses, information products and things, and other people can sign up to sell those products for a big chunk of the, the sale. Works great for a lot of people. A lot of people have gotten rich there, but it, it can also be, it, 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 be careful, be careful on ClickBank, so I'm saying. But here's what happened with me. So when I, I was writing in the first, I'd say, half of my career, it was a lot of ClickBank stuff. The thing about ClickBank is it's a very hungry marketplace, right, for, for good copy. There's a lot of very smart marketers on ClickBank, and they always need copy. And so I got my start working with some clients on, on ClickBank. A friend had, had introduced me to some. And once you do well there, it's actually kind of hard to get away because if you do well for somebody, people start throwing money at you and like, I need you to write my copy. Just tell me what it costs. But in the beginning of my career, I was charging about $10,000 for a sales letter. I had worked my way up to that. That was the situation when I wrote for a product called Mobile Monopoly. This is in 2010, like I said. And this thing, Mobile Monopoly, just goes absolute gangbusters. A total through the roof sales campaign. It, it broke records for one day sales. It broke records for one week sales. It, it, for a, a while, it, it held the record for most sales. It was number one on ClickBank for, I, I can't even remember how long. It was a pretty big deal to have a number one ClickBank sales letter back in the day. So this was so big that the, the uh, URL for this product was literally trending as a hot topic across the internet, okay? Not, not just uh, in our small world of direct response. The guys behind the launch, it, the thing, it, it made six figures in the first 30 minutes that it launched. Uh, and it, again, just kept going forever. And so everybody's making a ton of money. It's a big, it's a big deal. Everybody's clinking champagne glasses and celebrating. The affiliates are all getting fat and happy. And uh, certainly the product owners are very, very, very excited. The kid, by the way, is a funny side note. Oh, not funny, but just sort of fascinating. Adam Horowitz, who was 18, maybe 17 or 18, and still in high school when this product launched. And he, he was literally like refreshing his sales stats between classes and watching himself become rich by like fifth period. It, <laughs> it, was, it was incredible. But it was, you know, it was a good product and it had every right to do well. But 
this was an outlier. Uh, it did for back then way more than what most campaigns did regularly, all right? So how did writing the copy for that epic launch double or triple my income in the matter of a week? Well, the launch was so successful and ClickBank was still such a small world back then that everybody knew I had written the copy for this launch. And if you'll allow the brag, everyone loved it. It was a good copy and it was converting like mad. And that's why people love copy. <laughs> but even some, you know, in, important people said nice things about the copy more than they even just the fact that it was converting. For instance, Ryan Dice, I remember uh, when he was promoting it to his list, added in the PS, like, even if you're not interested in this product, I highly recommend you go study the sales page, you know, because it's some of the best copy I've seen. And, and that was a Awesome, like big feather in our caps. And I say are because I, at that time, had just brought on a, a writing partner, Ben Johnson, uh, who remained my partner after that for, for years. He contributed a lot to that copy. So if I mention we instead of I, I mean Ben and I. But, you know, for me and for us, because I had been around at that point a lot longer than Ben, it was like being a musician going from playing small clubs and then all of a sudden you have a number one billboard radio hit and a month later you're playing arenas. Like that's what it was like for us as the copywriters and certainly for the product creators, right? And so the phone is ringing off the proverbial hook after that. And Tim and Adam, the guys behind Mobile Monopoly, the first to call and say, hey, uh, we want to book your next spot right now because we obviously are going to follow this up and we don't want anyone else but you to write the copy. So when's your next spot? I open the calendar. I said, my next spot. And they say, how much? I say, it's going to be 20 this time. It was 10, it was 20. And they don't even flinch. They're like, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the brand, brand new rich and they know it's primarily due to the copy because these guys were so green when they, when they came to me, the reason they called me was because they, uh, when they were going around recruiting affiliates, the affiliates kept asking, who's writing your copy? And, and they were like, huh? After like the third one asked them, they told me, they were like, so we were like, nah, I guess we better find a copywriter. <laughs> they didn't even know they get, the copy was that important. That's how green these guys were, right? And they started asking, well, who would you hire? And they're like, well, here's a few names. And they said, there were other names, but your name came up every time. So obviously we're calling you first. So there I go from 10K was my standard price to now doubling it with the same client who we've got this huge result for, right? So point is less about the success, success of that campaign is more about the context of that. I literally charged them twice as much for the next thing that I had for the first thing. I doubled my income, we could say, in the span of a week with this incredibly successful campaign. So... After that, I did a bit of uh, promoting on my own to make sure that people in the industry knew about the success of the launch. And I actually went back into Facebook to find that post. It was from August 4th, 2010. And uh, go to the blog at copychief.com and look for the article where I lay out and I show, I'll show you screenshots of the, the post. So celebrating that and people like John Carlton, and Chris Adad and other major players in the industry coming on and congratulating me 12 years ago about this launch. Pretty cool. And I even made, I, I forgot about this, but I made a video that first week of the launch laying out some of the things we did in the sales letter that were kind of unique and different and really effective. So point is I did my part as a freelancer promoting myself and taking advantage of a hot moment to create more buzz and to create more demand for my services. I would recommend every freelancer do that. Please never hold back. When you have a major success, you have got to go celebrate and let people know you're kicking ass and you're working with great clients and you're doing great things. Absolutely critical. So I do all this. And again, I'm just now booked for the next you know, foreseeable four, five months instantly at, at my new price of 20K. So... Life is good for, for everybody involved. And then over time, I, and this is a rule everybody can use for how to, how to know when to raise your price. Here's a simple gauge that I always used. If I was booked at my current price, 
out far enough to where some people that I would love to work with and whom are comfortable with my price want to work with me, but only can't wait that long to get on my schedule. That's when it's time to raise the price. So when your demand is more than what you can supply, obviously by natural laws of business, it is time to raise your price. And so I would pretty much raise it by like 10K every time. So I went from 20 to 30 to 40, and then on to 50K, $50,000 for a, a launch package when I was freelancing, all right? And it all stemmed, the turning point was that one major hit. Obviously, since then I had to do a lot of hard work and, and keep the goodness happening to be able to keep raising my price, but Mobile Monopoly put me on the map in a, in a whole, new, whole new way. So with all that context, my point here is this. If I wanted to be a super hype, truth-bending marketer about that and sell you a product, I could frame this perfect storm event all kinds of ways, right? Here are a few potential horseshit headlines that I could use. I could say, how to write the one simple sales letter that will triple your copywriting fees or better and have every guru online begging you to take their money. I mean, it happened to me, so what's wrong with that? I could say how to go from charging 10K per sales letter to 30K, 40K, even $50,000 for the same work with a single Facebook post. Right? Because that's what I did. I posted about it and suddenly people wanted to give me more money. Or I could simply say how to double your copywriting revenue overnight, which is actually kind of the most legit of them <laughs> because it's simple, but it's still totally misleading. So why does that all sound like BS if, we, if we're talking real here? It's because it conveniently leaves out all the things I did leading up to that moment, right? Such as a full year studying the craft before I ever even landed my first client back when there was like only one course and a handful of books, writing tons of copy, learning from my mistakes, capitalizing on successes for tons of clients, some really horrible ones and a, a few really good ones, charging too little for too long. That's a big one. So when I did finally double my fee, it was actually overdue, worming my way into John Carlton's world by investing in his community and then a trip to Chicago when I couldn't afford either, making the scary leap to go full time so I could devote 100% of my uh, time to copywriting, bringing on a, a, a partner to help my slow going perfectionist ways, building a reputation as a go to copywriter in my niche, which was ClickBank. And it would also conveniently leave out all the things I had to do after that to continue growing my skills and my income to say that I 3x, 4x, 5x it, right? Investing in coaches and in networking events where I met a lot of my best clients learning to negotiate better deals like back-end royalties, losing thousands to bring in extra help. Uh, ben and I tried three times to hire other copywriters to help like grow an agency, only to end up rewriting their stuff every time and expanding our packages by adding in consulting days because believe me, a $50,000 package looks and acts different than a $10,000 package in a lot of ways. I tell you all of this so that we can be conscious of what I think is kind of the most important thing about all these tactics, many of them shady and overhyped and overpromising about how it affects you and your career. And as this, the only plan you will stick with is the one that actually works for you. That means there's no such thing as a one size fits all technique, method, or success hack to skyrocketing your revenue from copy projects, right? Just like anything in life, you need to lean into your strengths and work to improve your weaknesses. Yours will be different from the person next to you. And so it has to be a custom plan. It's got to work within your circumstances, your abilities. I say this a lot and it, it's, it's so true. The, this, I, you know, here's what's offensive about a one size fits all thing. It, it implies that if it fails for you, it's you're, you're stupid or you did it wrong or you're lazy, but it doesn't account for the fact that assuming that a single guy in his twenties who lives alone could go about 
growing a freelance career the same as a single mother with two kids. Right? Completely different circumstances, priorities, time, energy, availability, right? And so to not have a, a plan that is customized and flexible enough for you to work around your circumstances. Yes, of course you need to put in hard work. Yes, you, you need to be dedicated, but you also have to be realistic. And that's what these kinds of offers don't take into consideration. And so after seven years of coaching freelancers, this is what I want to give you. I don't, want, I don't just want to get on here and, and rant and complain. I want to try to do better for you. So here are the most proven effective steps for increasing your income as a freelancer, as I understand them after coaching a lot of freelancers to success. Number one, specialize because you will always earn more as a trusted expert than you will as a generalist. Number two, target dream clients. So don't just hope to work with your dream clients someday. Study what they're doing and develop ways to improve on it. Then introduce yourself or find someone to connect you and show it to them because I promise you will have their attention. Number three, build trust. The most overlooked asset freelancers have is simply being a good person. There are a lot of dirtbags out there. If you're the kind of person who follows the pro code and prides yourself on delivering for your clients with integrity, that is a huge asset to you and your business. So make sure to emphasize those things to prospects. They need to know that. It's important to them. If you're a good person, show that you're a good person. You don't have to tell someone, hey, I'm a good person, you can trust me. Show through circumstances, through stories, through situations. Put it on display. Trust me, it is a it is an asset. And most people just assume that everybody's good. Well, everybody probably does the right thing. No, they don't. They don't. So don't underestimate the fact that you're a good person as a major selling point for, I can tell you, as a business owner who pays hundreds of thousands of dollars to contractors, uh, I, I care very much about what kind of people they are before I hire them. Uh, number four, generate ROI, right? Simple business. Develop skills and processes that, are, that aren't just nice to have, but make your clients money. That's how you become indispensable. If you can show a client or a prospect how paying you will produce a return and they trust you to deliver results, you'll get more hell yeses than you can fit into your calendar. I promise you that. Number five, network. Network, simple, but it's got to be done. It is true that you become the average of the five people closest to you. In business, you've got to align with people who have achieved what you are looking to achieve so you can learn exactly how it works and apply it to your unique situation. Right? And keep this in mind. Creative freelancing is not a team sport like football. It's an individual sport like golf. So you've got to get coached accordingly. Demand a flexible system and a coach who recognizes your unique struggles. Confirm, confirm before doing business with your coach that they have the experience to help you capitalize on your strengths and eliminate weaknesses. If you have that, you can grow as fast as possible and earn as much as you want. Without it, you risk your reputation and you spread poison around the industry by forcing biz -ish tactics onto your prospects and clients. And if the thought of doing it that way feels wrong to you, it's supposed to. So use your head and trust your filter. And as always, I am rooting for you. And if you want my help identifying where you might be stuck right now in your freelancing, because it's often for reasons different than we think, and you want some free training on how to blast through those weaknesses, those troubles, those sticking points, then go to copychief.com forward slash phases. I put together a, a little questionnaire there, a little, a little survey, a little quiz, if you will. And what it'll do is uh, at the end of it, I will tell you based on your answers, which phase of the freelancer's journey you are in. There are seven. I will even offer you a free coaching session if you are in stage uh, phase three or beyond with my community success coach. 
This is not a sales call, by the way. It is just what it is. It's, it's a call to help you identify the phase you're in. And of course, we'll let you know about some of our paid programs to help you get the tools and the things that we use to get you there. But as importantly, we'll give you free stuff if you're in an earlier phase and yeah, maybe you can't afford right now to join a coaching program. Totally understandable. You've got to be earning money to spend money, to invest money. We're going to help you do that as well. So go to copychief.com forward slash phases and whatever you do, whether you, whether you take my quiz or not, please, if it seems too good to be true, assume it is and just verify, just do your due diligence. As a copywriter, you're going to need to be good at research. So be your own researching advocate first. Protect yourself, do good work, and we'll talk soon. See you. Hey, don't forget your goodies. Head over to copychief.com slash copychiefradio to get some great free stuff to help you put the things you hear on the show into action for your business. Copychief.com forward slash CCR. <laughs>